do not know azealia banks and i did a video on this years ago remember when dc young fly clowned her on wilding out and she started crying azealia banks feels like this is dc young fly's karma which is really disturbing so let me share my screen with y'all i'm gonna go ahead and uh, show y'all this real quick okay so azealia banks mocked dc young fly over the tragic death of his partner miss jackie O. In a vile Instagram rant on Wednesday, the controversial rapper 32, who uh, who recently slammed the 1975 rocker Maddie Haley, shocked fans when she took aim at DC Young Fly, 31, just days after the sudden passing of MTV star Jackie. DC Young Fly spent years disguising his own deeply rooted hatred of self as jokes paint, uh, pointed at women's beauty projecting his own feelings about his own ugliness onto women, perfectly secure in their own skin. Say what you want about my tears, they were pure tears of rage and not at all a sign of weakness because in the end I won. I'm happy I cried and moved on. That Jackie old girl must have been so deeply insecure about herself and the nerve of DC to call such a gorgeous woman as Azalea Banks ugly on national television while a bunch of black people laughed. First of all, why is she talking in third person? Then she goes on to say this, and ironically, dead at 32, exactly on my 32nd birthday, May 31st, 2023, in Miami, Florida, you niggas are gonna learn to stop fucking with me. Then she says, I don't think anyone gets how much the press, how much the press from that episode derailed the success of Anna Wintour. I came to sing my song and go home and only at the request of my label. Then that stupid butch queen on stage behind me, basically making a mockery of it being a gay song, fake voguing behind me in their do rags like they aren't all raging homosexuals. That thorn in my side is finally out. No way in hell I was blessed with this many gifts, this much talent and beauty. To be a cultural punching bag for a cast of peons who wouldn't have a pot to piss in if they didn't have the court of social media addicts to jester for. I do this in real life, dick lickers. Ha ha, ashe. But you have to enjoy your laugh around the theater because you're not going to be booking any other work Ooh. in any time. Enjoy while we know. You won't even make it to Top Comedy Jam, honey. Enjoy your laugh around the theater because you're not going to be booking any other work. Ooh. Honey, this is the ceiling. You need to for find you. your dentist. How do you take your goddamn braces off but you cut the little middle part? Stupid anger. <laughs> she told me to keep the wire. I don't even know if I want to play this game anymore. <laughs> but my team captain is so petty. How petty is she? That she told all her friends my <laughs> was trash so she can keep me all to herself. Now that's petty as hell. But you have to enjoy your laugh around the theater because you're not All right, child. So that is the whole drama uh, with Azealia Banks. So I just think, you know, the whole while and out thing was crazy. I remember reporting on it. She was crying. It was all this, you know, DC Young Fly kept calling her ugly. But again, that has nothing to do with Jackie O. I think to use Jackie O's death as a way to say that that's karma and this and that. If that's the case, Azealia has done a lot of ugly things to people. Azealia Banks has said a lot of ugly things. 
you know what I'm saying, to people who did not deserve it. So by that logic, could we say that her karma, you know, that she's getting her own karma or that something could happen to her, that she deserves death? You know, so I just I don't like that. You know, it's one thing to have an issue with Azealia, I mean, with DC Young Fly, but Azealia Banks, she she has said some really foul stuff over the years about a lot of celebrities. So I don't think that she should be using this woman's death as a way to clown him, because at the end of the day, she's still a mother you know, to three children. And the youngest one is probably not even understanding, you know, the youngest two actually, the full extent of this. So I don't like that at all. I don't like that at all. Now, there was another um, podcast I wanted to share with you guys too. They're also talking about the situation and they're starting to go viral on social media. Um, they're called the Viral Way Podcast. I haven't heard about them. But they made some very interesting points um, about the whole situation. And one thing I have noticed is that all of a sudden now, everybody's saying that Jackie O is DC Youngfly's wife. And I'm like, well, when did she become his wife when she wasn't his wife? Some people are saying fiance, but I, I don't know. So they're kind of talking about this on this podcast saying that you know, they're only saying wife now because he's trying to look good um, and stuff like that. So I'm going to go ahead and share this podcast with y'all. Give me just a second. Let me finish. Hold on, let me finish. One, one, one word. Let me get this point on. She was his partner. She wasn't his fiance. The nigga's lying. That's for publicity reasons. PR. You put three babies in her and you ain't married her yet. You don't give a shit about it and you don't care about them kids. Not even now. What, man? Wait. Look, I didn't say right. that. No, no, talk. no, no, no. I didn't say that. Let's Listen, talk. Listen, bro. On everything I love, what nigga gonna let his kid's mama go under the knife unnecessarily? Surgery is a serious issue. What if he's my wife, he oh, 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 wife right. had a, a minor surgery, bro. Very minor. Very minor. I was stressed the fuck out. Like, are you sure they got to do this? Can they give you pills? Can they? It's like when it's your wife and you thinking about your kids and you thinking about is something happened? You know, she ain't going to the doctor like she supposed to because she had an underlying heart condition mm -hmm. that a regular EKG would have caught. Is that mm -hmm. what it was? That's, That's what killed her? it. Oh, That's what okay. killed it. I, Bruh, really know. I go get my heart, all that checked every year, every adult even at 30, 25, should do that. So, so this lady is getting surgery from a doctor who was notorious for bad surgeries. Mm. She has an underlying heart condition, which means they wasn't on top of her health. He know he probably wasn't making sure she was on going to the doctor like she supposed to. And then he lets her go do that. There's no reason why he should have let that girl do that. Because she's trying to do that shit probably because he out smashing other chicks and she like, damn, I got to be able to compete with these chicks. Like, we talk Bruh. about everything but except what it really is. She trying to keep up with that nigga. She trying to make sure she still looks attractive so he look at her like something. Mm -hmm. And she's going and getting under the knife for that stuff. And people don't believe that. But when you was bad, like how she bad? And then you having babies and shit, and your body start taking hits, and your man out on the road smashing groupies, and you know it because you know they know it. They know it. You gotta know. It. You now are like, what about me? What do I gotta do to get him to look at me like he once did? That's on the man. And these women is out here choosing these goofball ass dudes because they got money. He's a damn goofball, <laughs> and, you, and and I can't call a man a goofball for being a comedian, but I can call yeah, a man a yeah. goofball. For letting this damn baby mama go unnecessarily under the knife, knowing we ain't on top of her health, making sure she's 100% fit, knowing that if she go down, you got three kids who ain't got a mama. I'm not letting my wife do that. Well, That's how I know she wasn't his it's wife. Kinda All right. He went in. He did. Now, I'm not going to say I disagree with everything he's saying. I think he did make some good points. Um, you know, because surgery is serious. I believe he was on the road, so maybe that's why he wasn't there with her. But, um, you know, you just never know what's going on behind the scenes. You know, why she felt the need to go and have the surgery because she was drop dead gorgeous. You know, to me, she didn't look like she had three kids. So I don't know. But, yeah, he was saying, you know, he was saying some real stuff is that, you know, a lot of times women will get things done 
because they want to make sure that their man is still looking at them and still, you know, they want to make sure they're still desirable and stuff like that. And after you have three kids, your body really does change. And that's why so many women, especially celebrities, they run to go get those mommy makeovers. And the name, even the name mommy makeover, it makes it sound like it's so simple. Oh, it's just, you know, a makeover is like getting a new hairstyle and makeup. This is not a makeover. This is surgery. Like even the name pacifies it. A mommy makeover that consists of a breast lift, liposuction, possible BBL, you know, liposuction on your thighs. It's it's a lot of stuff that's being reconstructed. Sometimes they're like, you know, fixing their coochies. It's, it's all types of stuff, right? So even the name, like I said, it's just, they, they make it seem like it's just no big deal. But um. The whole thing either way is just really sad. You know, I don't know if the man had a side chick or, you know, I don't know anything because I, like I said, I don't watch their vlogs. I don't know anything about their relationship, you know, but that's how that man feels. Like maybe that's why she was doing that. But then another thing too, to keep in mind, somebody said coochie, re re <laughs> coochie re rejuvenation. Yeah, that's what it's called. Thank you. I'm like, sometimes I get that coochie fixed. <laughs> that's the profession name for it. Coochie rejuvenation. <laughs> it's a lot of stuff that goes with the mommy makeovers, honey. But um, what you call it? You know her, her, her whole thing, right? Her whole claim to fame was being beautiful, and that she was. And I think that's where more pressure comes in at is the fact that she is pretty. And yeah, I know she did like the comedy thing. She was funny, but her bread and butter was her looks. Let's keep it real. And I think sometimes when your bread and butter is your looks, you're more susceptible, you know, to feeling like you got to tweak things and change things around. And it seems like after this last baby, um, cause I know I saw another video of her where she was talking about, you know, she had a trainer, she was working out and how hard it was for her because she looks at everybody else. Everybody else is just getting surgery and she's having to do a trainer but with this time, with this third baby, maybe that baby did more, you know, to her that she felt like she had to go get it done. But, um, you know, it, it's such a double edged sword. While it's easy to clown and say, oh, you know, get some self-esteem or just love your body. But when you go on social media, that's just not the truth of the matter. You know, the people who are paraded around, the ones who are on all the top black blogs, you know, the ones who are in all the magazines who are talked about, they have a certain aesthetic. They look a certain way. They have a certain body type. You know, Coy LeRae has never done anything to her body. There were whole tw uh, Twitter threads, people calling her olive oil, making fun of her, making fun of her weight. You know, uh, Glorilla, she's too skinny. She has no chest. You know, and then when women get their bodies done, oh, low self-esteem, fake ass, fake tits. So it's like you really can't win for lose. You know, that that's the part. It's like as women, you just really can't win for lose. You know, at the end of the day, you have to do what makes you happy. But please understand that if you are going to get these surgeries, these are real surgeries. Okay. You know, I know Roly made it look all easy. You know, the big girl just laying there, you know, uh, getting a BBL on camera. That that's not that's not even how it should work. I don't even understand that at all. And I think the only reason why they kept her awake for the most part was because she was probably too big for anesthesia. You know, because even you know when they had to do surgery, if you're a certain size, they can't keep you under that long. So it's like he's cutting corners by doing little stuff. So y'all have to really be careful with some of these doctors, just because you see these influencers, you know, going to certain doctors, do your own research, really check their background, but just understand that that's what any surgery, anything can happen. Anytime you go under the knife, you can have a reaction. You cannot wake up. You can lose blood, you know? So I, I hate how people act like this is only with BBLs or only with, you know, plastic surgery. It can happen with any surgery. And, um, in Miami, if you guys don't know, it has gotten so bad down there that there's a whole uh, federal investigation. There's like a whole, I want to say like an FBI task force that was basically given clearance to go down to Florida because there were so many deaths from BBLs. 
And so what they were finding out was that so many girls from social media were falling behind a lot of these influencers. You see your favorite Instagram model and, you know, you, you see them in the comments. Who did your ass? Dr. J, who did your ass? Goals, who, you know what I mean? So you see them swapping doctors and, you know, talking about doctors in the comments. So what happened is that there were so many women and young girls going down to Florida to get these BBLs. And um, because so many were dying, they ended up putting together a task force to figure out what is going on, why are these women dying like this? Because Florida has the highest death rate of BBLs than any other place in the country. They have, they have the highest. And one of the things that they found out is that they were basically treating these BBLs almost like a, a workshop. So some of these doctors were doing surgeries for 12 hours straight. When... If this is like a regular facility, a regular hospital, the average surgeon, you might be the only patient they work on that day. I don't want my surgery because even like for me, when I had my most recent shoulder surgery, my surgeon only worked on me. He did whoever surgery the day before and maybe the day after. But hell no, you're not about to work at some on somebody at six o'clock in the morning, get done around noon, and then I stroll up in there. Absolutely not. I will be your only patient for the day. And that's how most doctors do that. And so granted, you know, this my shoulder surgery was way more extensive than a, you know, BBL. But the point is, they were literally working upwards of 12 hours a day. They were literally doing BBLs on upwards of 10 women a day. So the first set of women, maybe like the first three, you guys have the best of the doctor. He's bright eyed and bushy tailed, had a good breakfast, you know? So yeah, y'all are good. Well, now it's nine o'clock at night. He's not enough and shit. He's tired. This is like his 12th BBL. After a while, all these asses all look alike. So what ended up happening is like a lot of the women who were getting them later on in the day were ending up dying from the mistakes. So now they've made a rule and y'all can go and do your research. Um, they cannot perform BBLs on more. I think the max now in Florida is four, four women a day. It's either four or five, but I believe it's four. It used to be upwards of 12. How can you properly do surgery in one day on 12 people. These are women with different, is it only three? Did they bring it down to three? I know they brought it down drastically. Three, okay, it's three now. Cause I remember at one point it was down to five, but yeah, they were doing upwards of 12 per doctor. And so you got women, cause you never know, they could all be healthy. But once you start cutting, you can find other issues, you know, you can have an embolism, you know, so all types of things happen while they're in the surgery. And a lot of times these are clinics, they're not hospitals, so they don't have extra bags of blood. They don't have like an emergency area. So they were just turning, it, it just was like meat factories, just meat factories. And so that's why there were so many women dying down there in Florida because the doctors were putting profits. I mean, you figure if you're charging every woman, let's say minimum $10,000 for this surgery and you're doing 12 women a day, that's a lot of damn money every day. So it's not just, you know, I'm doing 12 women on Monday and then I'm taking a break, you know, Tuesday through Sunday. No, literally every day. It just became a hustle to a lot of these doctors. So that's why there were so many deaths. So yeah, an assembly line. Thank you. That's the perfect way to describe it. An assembly line. So just, you know, just be very careful. Like I said, I don't knock anybody because like I said, it's very easy to, to judge women and say, oh, you have low self-esteem or, oh, you need to do this or you should just love yourself. It, it sounds good. It sounds good. But when I, when I scroll Instagram, I don't see a whole bunch of love yourself posts. All I see, oh, she's a baddie, oh, this, oh, that, you know, small waist, fat ass, big tits. So it's like, it, it sounds good. But a lot of the men who are screaming, you should just love yourself. When I go through their file, because I love when they write that. And then I click on their profile. Let me see who they're following. Besides my regular dead glass. Let me see who else they're following. Oh, okay. All the latest, latest IG models. I see a lot of regular, you know, love yourself females that you yourself are following, sir. So I don't want to hear it. 
You know what I mean? I think, you know, at the end of the day, people are going to do what they want to do, right? But all I can say is just please make sure you do your research and understand that if you choose to go under the knife voluntarily, there's a chance that you could not make it. And that is why you have to sign, sign waivers. You know, everybody's like, oh, they're going to sue this doctor. Now she signed waivers. They can try, but that's part of having surgery. You sign a bunch of paperwork that day. And you just, you know, can do nothing but pray. That's why I love my prayer warriors. You know what I'm saying? In the Telegraph group, in the Discord, you know, like anytime I've had surgery, you guys have prayed with me. My mom, I had y'all on speaker and my mom was just like so surprised that just everybody was just praying for me that day when I had to go into surgery last year. So I don't play, you know, I sign my waivers and then we do a big old prayer circle, you know, and then it's like, all right, we're counting down and I'm out and I just pray I wake up. You know, so, yeah, just just be careful, you know. But again, I'm, I'm not going to knock this woman and, you know, so she should have just loved herself. She's pretty. You just don't know. You know, it's easy to say that. But, you know, you don't know how she felt when she took her clothes off or, you know, her stomach maybe not being as flat or, you know, everybody's, everybody says all that fly shit like, oh, you should just love your stretch marks. And so what if you got a little bit of a gut? Okay, that's yeah, great. So what? Then don't cheat on me with the girl with the six pack and no stretch marks, you know? So you just don't know, you know? Everybody's insecure about something. But yeah, if you can lose it naturally and go to the gym and work out, yes, of course, that's the best way to do it. You know what I'm saying? But if it's something that's really bothering you, like somebody says, you know, everybody talks that shit, but then when somebody's shaped like a wisdom tooth, Y'all don't praise them and post them up and be like, oh, she fine. Y'all clown her body. Like, oh, she's built like a refrigerator. She looks like a bag of laundry. And then when they get surgery, then people get mad. Oh, low self-esteem ass bitch. Oh, she couldn't have that body. She didn't have surgery. So it's like, you can't win. You can't win. But all I say is just do it safe. Please do not go the rolly way. I just, I did not like that at all. That was like probably like the most unsafe method I've ever seen. And then, like I said, the fact that she's morbidly obese, they should have worked with her first to get her weight down because she got the BBL and I don't see a difference. I just, okay, your ass pokes out a little bit more, but with everything else, it, it just, I don't see a difference. If you all. want the latest news in the streets, join us sentiment for the tea. Breaking news with integrity. So sir, your friends and your family. It's the lovely TV show. Bringing you good tea and good vibes. It's the lovely TV show. Be sure to share, like, and subscribe.